All right, so we're gonna take a look at creating schedules today in Revit. And so you just need to open a project. So we're gonna be working from the Habitat for Humanity three bedroom house that we've been working on. And so in here, you just need to have some doors and some windows. So you don't have to have them all in here, but go ahead and open that project and just have some different styles of doors. Like I've got some bifold doors here. I've got some single flush doors here. So have some different doors and some different sizes in here. And then also have some different windows and mine are all the same. They're all double hung windows, but just have some windows of different sizes so we can see how those are treated in the schedules. So once you have that done, you're ready to create your schedule. So you go to the view tab up here on the ribbon, you come across and you find schedules. So the little button's right there, schedule and quantities. This little menu shows up and what we're gonna do is we're going to find doors we're going to create a door schedule. So this is actually going to be the title of the schedule. So if you want your title to be in all capital letters, just type it in all capital letters. So I will just type in door schedule. I'm going to schedule building components. We haven't worked with phases. And so we're going to leave that as new construction and then hit OK. And then the first time what I like to do is just select everything. So I'm going to select all the available fields that come with our doors and I'm going to hit add to shoot them across. And then at this point, I'm just gonna hit okay. And then this gives me everything that's already in Revit about these doors. And so you can just look through these columns and you can choose which columns you want, which columns you need in your schedule. And then we'll go back and, and edit our schedule. So if you look through here, uh, so comments looks like I've put some, some data in there. So I'll probably want that comments column. If you want quantity, you've got your count column. Uh, description, family and family type. Doesn't really look like there's much there that I need. Function, so we've got head height, we have height, jam, key side rim number. So you can tell there's a lot of fields in there. So what I would do at this point is go ahead and write those fields down that I want. And then we'll go back and make changes to it. So let me go ahead and do that real quick and then we'll go back and edit our schedule. All right, so now going back to edit our schedule. So I don't have anything selected. So you can just click on space anywhere. And over here is the properties of your schedule. So if you just scroll down in here, you can click on any of these edit buttons and that will get you back to editing the schedule. So I'll just click on that edit button next to fields. And now I can remove all of these. So I'll just hold down shift, select them all, do remove. And then what I decided I wanted was width. So I'll just double click on width and shoot it over, find mark, shoot it over, find height, and shoot it over. And then finally comments and shoot it over. So I've got them all over there. So I want mark to be first. So I'll select it and move it up. And then width, height, and comments, that's okay. So you set what you need to here, and then you go over to your next button, so filter. So this would be used if you want to um, filter certain data out. So if you want to remove certain data, uh, such as if you have a two-story house, and you've got a first floor and a second floor, and you just want to show the doors in the first floor, then you'd sort by, or a filter for only your first floor doors. So we're not going to do any of that. We can go on over to sorting and grouping. So this is how you want them sorted by. So I want them sorted by mark in ascending order. And then there's just the option if you want a blank line in between, like what's shown here, puts a blank line in between the header and where the data actually starts. So that's up to you on whether you want that in there. And then we've got, it'll either give us grand totals or itemize every instance. For doors, I do itemize every instance. So I'll leave that checked. Come on over to formatting. So this is where if you want that heading to be capitalized, that's where you'll capitalize it. Your heading orientation, your alignment, I'm gonna have it centered. Everything else there looks good. So I've done mark, I'll go ahead and do the same thing for width. So I'll capitalize it, center it, same thing for height. Capitalize it, center it, and then comments, I'll just change this to be notes. And then I'm going to leave it being left justified. 
And then the last thing I've got is appearance. So this is what my actual schedule looks like. So I'll leave thin lines turned on for my grid lines, my blank row before my data. That's where this is at. So I'll go ahead and uncheck that so it gets rid of this blank row before this data. And then we've got show title, show headers, and then my text height. So I'm going to use the same text height that I'm using in the rest of my project, which is all 330 seconds dimensions, 330 seconds notes. So 330 seconds in my schedule. So I've changed all that stuff. I can hit OK. And now there's my schedule. So now if I come down, find a sheet, see if I can find a sheet that this will fit on. Okay. So I've got my dimension floor plan right here. So same thing with any view. We just find our view over here in our project browser and just left click and drag it over and drop it in place. And then once you have it there, then you can resize your columns. So resize your columns from the sheet. Don't do it from inside the schedule. So don't go and open your schedule and resize it in here uh, because the two are not linked together. So just go ahead and do it on the sheet itself. So resize as you need to, to get it to fit on that page. Just by clicking on it, then taking these little arrows and moving them around so everything fits on there. And I'll just shrink this up a little bit so that it kind of balance those first couple of rows to be two lines of text. All right. And there we have it. So there's our door schedule. Pretty simple door schedule. Windows schedule, you do the same thing. The only one that's a little different is the finished schedule. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. So I'm going to go on back to my floor plan right here. So to do a finished schedule, I first need to have some rooms. It doesn't look like I have rooms in here, so let me go ahead and create those real quick. So your project should have rooms in it. I opened a different project. So let me pause this. I'll make some rooms, then we'll look at a finished schedule. All right, so now I've got my rooms that I can work with. So I'm just going to just change the scale here for a minute, just so those tiles are a little smaller. It's a little easier to read in here. All right, so if I take a look at my room, so I'm just going to hover over the X in the middle and click on it. So now over here in properties, I see my So we see ceiling finish, wall finish, and floor finish. And so that's the stuff we want because what we're going for on a finished schedule is let me switch over to a different project over here is this would be an example of a finished schedule so we have a different house we've got our rooms in our house so for a certain room number for a certain certain room name what do we have on the floor what do we have on the wall and what do we have on the ceiling so that's what we're looking for here on this particular uh, finished schedule so let me make sure I'm back to the right project and I am so I'm going to go ahead and enter data in for my kitchen. So I'm just going to say for my kitchen on the ceiling, we're just going to paint it. For the walls, we'll just paint those as well. And then the floor finish, we're going to put um, ceramic tile down for the floor in the kitchen. So I'll just hit apply. So now when I go and create a schedule, Come up to the view tab click on schedules and quantities this time i actually want a room schedule and i'm just going to give it a different name i call this my finished schedule but what i'm really making a schedule of is all the rooms in my house so i'll hit, hit ok here so here i already know i want room name room number i want ceiling finish floor finish, and then wall finish. I want number to be first, and then name, and then we'll go ceiling, then wall, and then floor finish. So I get those set, come on over to filter. I could filter any out if I wanted to, come over to sorting. I'm gonna sort these by room number, come on over to formatting, and again, I would change all capital letters for my headings. I would change the alignment if I needed to. Come on over to appearance, make any changes in here that I needed to, and then hit OK. So now I get this information here. 
And so now what you can do is once you have your schedule, you can actually just go in and enter the information in from here and that will populate that room. So for my living room, I'll put hardwood for that. I'll put a wall finish, we use brocade. And then for, sorry, <laughs> for the ceiling finish, <laughs> we use brocade there. Wall finish, we're just gonna say paint. And then the floor finish, we'll make that hardwood. There we go, so we've got hardwood there. So now if I go back to my floor plan, click on my living room, you can see how that information was just added right into the identity data section for that living room. So you go ahead and do that for all your rooms. And that would give you your finished schedule. And then again, same thing with that, you can just find your sheet and drag and drop that on there as you need to. So I'll just drag this out here. My floor plan's all big just because I changed the scale. So I'll just change that scale back. So 3 16th inch equals a foot. And now I can drag this over there, put it on there. And then as I go and enter more information into my schedule, that's going to show up in my schedule. So it's a dynamic schedule. It'll update. So for instance, with my closet, I'm just going to put paint on the ceiling because it's just a closet. Walls, just going to be paint. And then this particular closet, we'll just put hardwood flooring on it as well. And then when you come back here, you'll see how it's already updated. And same thing with your doors. Just be careful on your doors if you come in here. And if you uh, happen to delete a door, so if you delete an entire row out of your schedule, that's actually taking that, it's taking that door out of your project. So if you do delete a row, it's going to tell you you're removing, not just removing row, but you're also deleting the door itself. So if I do that, now door two is gone. So I can go back to my floor plan and look on here. And door two was actually right here. It was actually the front door in the house. So it's now gone. Let's see if I can undo that and bring it back and now it's back so be careful if you delete anything here it's going to delete it out of your schedule if you delete it out of your schedule it's going to delete it out of your project so that stuff is dynamically linked so in a nutshell that's schedules so you've got a door schedule a window schedule and a finish schedule to do i hope they all go great and i can't wait to see what you've got done when i get back so we'll talk to you soon thanks